pay you to this southern pepper one it's been sprinkling a little bit and it's going to rain some more today so if you want rain just come to south carolina we have excess we'll give you some yesterday i made a comment about the solar panels and i didn't explain myself and that was my fault but um a, a lot of people have gotten grid tie systems so basically what they do is they put panels on your roof they tie it into the system um and you can get uh reduced electricity or you can get free electricity when you're producing enough uh, off your panels then it's not costing anything some places let you sell it back to the grid so your power is going back into the grid system so that's good um, I've had a few people call me and give me horror stories one person and, and and there's probably good companies out there I'm putting so much general information out there it's general information um, there's lots of companies out there a couple people had horror stories they got the grid tie system and they were thinking they would have power when the grid goes down so if a storm comes through knocks out the power they'll be fine that is not the case um, when the grid goes down your panels do not produce power so you do not have power at your house um, I, I've truly felt this was very deceitful these people because in the conversation they just mentioned about power outages and having power and the salesman should have corrected them at that point and, and steered them in a different direction but there's companies that are you know unethical um, but there are also companies that do this that are ethical so I'm just generalizing um, I've had a couple people I know do it uh, one person is a good friend of mine he had his brother and brother-in-law did it um, I think he spent fifty thousand dollars and my buddy calculated all the components and I think he said about twelve thousand dollars in components so the rest was labor and a huge markup now what happens is a lot of people get the grid tie but they can't afford it so they have to take a loan out so now they're in debt tied in with their house let's hypothetically say they need to sell their house quickly what happens with the contract I don't know I've never never researched it but there is they still have a bill so I guess that bill will get paid in full when you sell the house what if you can't generate enough revenue when you sell the house to pay it off um, the sale probably won't go through because there's probably gonna be like a lien or something against it but you're taking on a huge bill to get a little bit of savings every month and you know what in your area it might be worth it I know some areas they don't pay you um, the full value of it sometimes so you know you could be selling them cheaper electric than they sell it to other people so that is a grid tie um, I, I want to talk about EMP so when you grid tie your whole system together and let's say uh, you decide you want to go with also a battery backup and that's called a hybrid system so you have a grid tie it's tied with the grid system you're making power putting the power back into the power grid for others to use you can also go ahead and do a hybrid system which you will have batteries at your house so the batteries will store electricity so if the power goes off on the grid you still have power at your house that's a hybrid system and that's good a lot of people use them and it's awesome um, but if you get hit with an EMP that long power grid of millions of miles or whatever it is is acting like an antenna directing all of that into your system now there are means to protect your system have they been truly studied yes and no I mean they've been studied under laboratory conditions and they're worth having and they also protect against lightning strikes so definitely worth having so you have a grid tie only you have a hybrid so you have grid tie and batteries and I like that there's nothing wrong with that um, the only thing is the grid tie being uh, some states require um, and every state is different so this is generalization they require you if you tie back in the grid to have a million dollar insurance policy so if your system does something wrong and it damages the grid or it kills someone working on the thing um, and, and something was wrong on your system that you're covered just liability now this insurance is not cheap some states might require it some states might some power companies might require it so 
you, you just have to check into that. But that's a hidden cost someone told me about that, that they weren't thinking about and didn't factor it in, You're carrying a million dollar policy um, because of the liability of hooking back to the grid. So that could be another negative. What happened if that, that bill goes higher? I've also heard that sometimes um, power companies have, have changed policies and have dropped the rate of them paying you. You know, I don't know the contract that people sign, but what happened if the electric company gives you less money than you're counting on? Is it possible or do you have a contract for 20 years or whatever? I don't know. I, that would worry me. Also worrying me is signing a debt for another twenty-five dollars or $50,000 that I'm required to pay because I got a system. So, you know, if your house burns down, is that insurance company going to cover the full cost of that liability where they co cover the cost of just replacing the equipment? Just so many variables. I'm a conservative person. I don't like taking excess risk and, and, and going into the debt, twenty five dollars to $50,000 is a risk. Now, if you have the money in the bank, uh, you're probably not too worried about doing a uh, you know, selling power back, you're probably, if you're on my channel, a prepper, and you want a bigger battery bank. So when the power grid goes down, you're good. Uh, tying in to the power grid, you just definitely have more regulations you have to abide by, more uh, big brother, uh, big industrial utilities in your business. Um, so you have grid tie, you just sell power back, you also get get the power to use at your house. You have a hybrid, which is selling to the grid and using batteries for when the power goes off. Or you just have a complete off-grid system that's not tied in with the grid. I like that system um, because then I use all the power I want to use. I store the power in my batteries and I'm not connected to the power grid. Now, if you're totally off-grid, then you're definitely not having any electricity come into your house. Um, to, to be honest with you, the system that I like, and it's just me, and there's a million people out there with a million opinions, having two systems in your house. Having a system with the grid power, because grid power is awesome. You can't argue with the amount of power you get for the cost. Um, and then having a system in your house that is not tied in with the grid, that is powering certain critical loads or critical circuits in your house. So you can keep things running, and in, in case of an EMP, you're not going to get that whole system acting like an antenna, the power grid commercial, and, and, and destroying your system. Now granted, you need protection on your system because it can still pick up an EMP. Um, but because your system's wiring is a lot smaller than the whole world's grid or the United States grid, you have a less of a chance. But you still need to use things to protect it from lightning and from an EMP. I, I, hope, I hope this helps. Um, this is just generalization. This is why I said that when the lady, you know, selling power back. Um, know what you're getting. If you do the math, and, and you figure out your huge debt, if you figure out the interest, um, is it worth it? Is it worth taking on huge liability? How much money are you going to actually save? You know, you might spend 50,000, hey Dave, I saved $250 this month on electric costs, but you're making a $500 payment to pay for your system. What happens if your system breaks? And it's not covered by a warranty matter, or it's not, you know, and you lose a $4,000 part or something crazy happens. Then you're putting money out. And you still owe on it. Now, you might get a battery back off-grid system in your house, and you still might have a loan on it. And I understand that. But if you could put a system in without getting the permission from your utilities, and you do not tie it in with the utilities. Now, if you put a system in there, you probably have to have an inspection um, and your permit and all that stuff, but you're not tied in with the grid. Some places you might not need that. You might live so far in the boondocks, uh, you can just put a system in your house. So having a system in your house that's not tied in with the grid at all, I think is the ultimate prepper way of doing it. Uh, others that do this for a living will probably say, no, 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 tie in with the grid. I'm taking as less chances as I can.
I hope this helps. I love solar. I think solar's the way to go. But solar, I have talked to people that have had their systems go down. They're huge, $50,000 systems that they're totally almost off grid. They go down because of simple parts. And some have said, man, my, par my part's gonna be not here for six to eight weeks. Some people, it's longer. So basically the bottom line is, yeah, go with solar to save money every day if you can work that out. Go with solar in case the temporary grid goes down. But if an EMP comes and takes out everything, you need to be able to live like 1860. So 1860 is the magic number. Can you live like they did in 1860? Do you have candles? Do you have a, a filter that you can filter your water so you don't have to boil it? That's how you're supposed to look at this. Um, have every convenience you can for your family because it's well worth it. I hope this explained. I'm sorry I confused people. Uh, definitely did not intend to do that. Thanks for watching.